you've got a bank, one of the biggest banks in the UK, and just a, generally a big bank anyway, talking about DLT technology and how it can like benefit them, and then they start to specifically reference XRP and Ripple. How can you still be in that camp of like, oh, no bank's going to use it, nothing's going to happen here with it, it's a shit coin, this, this, that, and the other. Like, I just, it, honestly, it just, I don't get it's it. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Like, it's embarrassing because people want to protect their network so much, they just have their eyes closed to everything else. And then there's just like, there'll be just more conspiracy that'll come out. Oh yeah, that it's just like, not this, it's not this. But they literally, like, you can see it right there. Ripple's XRP ledger provides real-time cross-border payments settlements. Like what more do you need? It, on the HSBC payment section on their site, it's what it says. That literally says XRP ledger right there. Like, how can you deny that? You, it's not deniable. But anyway, that also links in with what, I think I talked about maybe in the first few episodes mm -hmm. of the weekly roundup where we talked about that uh, the Bank of England were exploring um, distributed ledger technology for sovereign debt. We've talked about that before. And if like yeah. one of the big banks within England are talking about Ripple and XRP ledger, you just got to hope. And this is where some conspiracy comes in. Fair enough. You've just got to hope that it is Ripple's XRP ledger that take on the sovereign debt. That's government bonds, by the way. And like if they get... If they get government bonds and derivatives, it's like, if you get it worldwide, it's like a, like a quadrillion dollars. <laughs> but if you just get it in the yeah, UK, I don't, cool. I don't know exactly what the what the market cap of it it's is. Still a lot. Yeah, it's just a lot of dough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of money to jump on that ledger. But, but no, I mean, we'll link this, obviously, HSBC with two other big names, basically supporting XRP. So we had, obviously, like... Uh, we had Wells Fargo come out, and then now we have Goldman Sachs basically stating that XRP is a um, a, a currency, and you know, they also talk about how it obviously how it fixes a lot of problems with um, foreign exchange, all that kind of all that kind of malarkey. But um, two big names, you you couple that with the HSBC news that we've just reported on there, and then you also oh, we've got that open twice. Then you get to the big news here. Yeah, this is why this is all at the end because it's all to do with banks and banks basically all either referring to Ripple or like we see here, actually part partnering and using Ripple's DLT. This is mud. This, this is, is crazy. Huge. Cause it's not only are these using like RippleNet, they're literally there, like it says, using ODL, utilizing XRP, the digital asset for payments to settle across border. This is Brazil. This is in Brazil, Travelex Bank, approved by the Central Bank of Brazil to operate exclusively in foreign exchange. All there in black and white, have a read, suck it up, baby, here we go. This is a madness. It is. This a is a madness. Like, madness. The tweet, the tweet, the tweet that came out, and like, obviously the main thing that kind of strikes me is that it's approved by Brazil's Central Bank. It's not just like a, a random company this time. It's a bank that's been approved by Brazil's central bank. They've got their approval. They're obviously regulated, all that kind of good stuff. And they've given the green light to use Ripple's DLT here for all their... They're obviously exclusive for Brazil's foreign exchange. And there's something... I've got what figure it was like 700 million, billion, something like that. Billion, a lot, yeah. Something like that. Some ridiculous amounts of money here talking about. And it's not just some small country. Obviously, we know Brazil are really proactive in the crypto space in general. But... What a what a country to jump into, and what a, a bank to like partner up with. Obviously, these guys are actually based in London as well, so you can kind of make that link as well if you want to. It's up to you if you want to make that link. Whether they'll follow suit here as well, do it all over. I think they operate in thirty different countries, so it's not just a small bank. It's a pretty big, big personal bank here as well. It's crazy, and they literally they're they're telling you it's ODL and they're setting an XRP, so you, no one can be like, oh yeah, it's Ripple, it's not XRP. It is literally XRP. ODL on demand liquidity and they're utilizing XRP. It's right there, guys, for everyone to read. They're utilizing XRP to settle transactions in the FX market, which is foreign exchange, which is just currency to currency. It's what else can you say? Like, this is, yeah, it's a this is, this big is what <laughs> I know. This is XRP. This is exactly why we invest in it because it, it, it solves problems like obviously which we always speak about here and now we've got a bank jumping in and using it one of the first like major banks to properly jump into it and use their technology and like like literally like we say i literally say this every single week no matter what we're speaking about it just takes one big bank to get get involved 
and then other people will get onto the benefits they'll see the benefits they'll see how they're using it etc they almost use these guys as a dummy and then they will then jump on it as well so like like i'm i guarantee you by the end of this year you will have a, f- a few banks yeah, maybe several banks the, who knows there's a few things about that isn't there it's like one like they're going to see what happens that all these countries already use it, all these corridors smaller banks then if they can see oh okay like a big bank's using it and it looks good two things about that are one is okay it looks good so we'll try it now but the other thing is if they don't try it fast they can't compete like what what can you do to compete with that and the second thing and the most important thing for me is like Brazil obviously don't give a crap what the SEC think of XRP. I talked about this on my TikTok today. The no SEC way. could think XRP is classified as a flipping crayon and, and Brazil is still going to use it to, to make cross-border transactions because it's cheaper for their customers. It doesn't matter what the SEC think. It's ridiculous what's going on in America. This is my point about like legislation in general. Who cares genuinely what category you put this like crypto like under so long as you can just use it as the asset it was invented to be used, like the way it was invented to be used, like all these countries are already doing it. Brazil are a huge, a huge country financially. What are you going to do in America? You're, this company, Ripple, who have the escrow of XRP, are sitting inside your country and you've got one regulator who's doing the job of the government. The government probably put a quota on them to try and make a certain amount of money per year to like bring into the government. But they're like, they're literally stifling innovation in your country. And then your your company has had to go around other countries in the world and they're like having technological advances faster than your country because you've got a, a legislator in your country who's just, for whatever reason, good, bad, like nefarious, whatever, like maybe it's just is what it is, they're trying to fill the quota. But for whatever reason, they're stifling that innovation in your country and you cannot compete with the for, with the foreign exchange that they're providing. And they're also taking away liquidity and volume from the US dollar. Like, how can someone above the SEC, Congress, even, like, it doesn't take a genius to work it out. Like, we could bloody see it. So what the hell are they playing at? Just, oh, it blows my mind. This, exactly. And I'm pretty sure we've had the same exact same conversation on like, the one of the earlier weeks that we are talking about. Like, if we can see it, surely someone with half a brain cell who have some sort of power... In, in wherever they are in the like, US Congress, surely they can see this and they can see what the SEC are doing and surely it's their in, be- in their best interest to to get rid of this case so they can start using and taking advantage of, of obviously a ripple using their technology to keep up with like all these countries that are overtaking them as we speak. Not not to mean obviously they've all got their own problems, but this could obviously can help a lot of their problems anyway. So like yeah. like you said, it's just started innovation and it's just the like I don't, it baffles me to the big issue they've got is that, like, at some point, if you're Ripple, if you're Brad Gardenhouse and you're Ripple and you're sitting on all this XRP and you're getting sued by the SEC for genuinely no reason that we can find yet anyway, like, there's obviously a reason they're saying that it's an unregistered security, but they haven't got the facts for it. They keep delaying for whatever reason because they want to do whatever in their own agenda. At some point, if you're Ripple, you just go, yeah, okay, you are the biggest economy in the world, but fuck this, like, we're going across across border to going to go and sit in Singapore or the UK where, who actually want to work with us because we've already got all these partnerships around the world and then how much of a problem is that for the USA going to be? Like, yeah, the USA could be like, oh yeah, we're not going to use Ripple in this country. Okay, it will stunt growth of XRP and Ripple but it won't stop it. They're still going to grow it everywhere else and the, U- and the US are just going to lose like volume from the US dollar because all those payment corridors yeah. that were being paid for in the US dollar are all, all of a sudden going to be getting like being paid for in XRP and what are the US going to do then? Oh, yeah don't use that don't use that thing that's like slower and faster use our dollar because we've got it like what what are you doing to yourself well this is what i mean obviously this has been around for a couple months from when brad Brad was talking about to someone in an interview he's basically saying obviously um i think we actually we reported on it in the weekly roundup but he's basically saying obviously ripple are, are acting as if they've basically lost the lawsuit like they're basically just cracking on in different countries and working with different uh, banks or whoever they're working with, making different partnerships here outside of the US, and they're still conducting their day-to-day business. So, like, whether obviously, whatever happens with the case, like, it's not going to be the end of Ripple full stop because, and people don't seem to understand that as well. People seem to think that, oh, if the US don't like them, say, you know, worst comes to worst, and Ripple do actually lose his lawsuit, 
they're still going to make partnerships with all the banks around it. They've just done it with Brazil right now. They, who's to say they're not going to do it with another big, massive country who are pro-crypto? Yeah, like, that's, do you know what I mean? That's such a good point because that's exactly the point that you're that you're making there. It's like so important because even if they do lose the suit, it'll probably be it'll probably be a positive effect on XRP because at the minute everyone's just like if they lose the suit, they're going to get classified as something. Like maybe they get classified as security in the US. Everywhere else, it's still not a security. Yeah. And who knows what that might mean? That might mean that they have. Like they just have to register in, in specific places or sell it under a specific name or sell it over the counter or sell it through like specific brokers. They will be, there will come legislation around what a crypto security is, even if they lose a lawsuit, which I personally, I know you don't, we speculate they aren't going to lose. But even if they do, yeah, it'll actually be positive for XRP. And that's something that people don't get. They think that like XRP lose or Ripple lose the lawsuit about XRP and XRP disappears. It's, it's just not going to happen. Is yeah, it, it will like probably that. be positive well, if they lose. It's just more positive if they win. This is what I mean. If you like the way I thought, I'd thought today. If you kind of got someone now in the room with you, and like they ha don't really know too much about crypto or anything about the financial markets, and you explain to them what's going on between Ripple and the SEC, and you explain it. Look, we've got HSBC referring to it. You've got Bank of England speaking about it. You've got a, a, a bank in Brazil now using it, who are obviously been approved by the their, their own central bank you've got wells fargo goldman sachs saying it's a currency oh yeah but you've got the sec who are suing them for this what for whatever reason and they actually can't use it it's been taken off exchanges in the us they're stifling innovation surely they're going to think that surely they're even from someone who doesn't understand crypto they're going to surely side with ripple and sec do you know what i mean if you if you pile all the facts up like that even what we just spoke about today mm -hmm. that's enough for and, and the average joe to think that okay look what the US and SEC, they're just shooting themselves in the foot, surely. Exactly so, like... that. Exactly that. And that shows you, though, how lost like a lot of the crypto space is, especially people who've been here for a while, because they don't they don't even look at these facts. They just think, oh, something about XRP, it's probably fake. Or, like, I don't even know what people think. Like, they don't, I don't even know if they do think about it. I think they just think, like, oh, I don't like XRP, so I don't care what, what happens. That's literally yeah. it. Like, oh, yeah, OK, yeah. cool. they got a partnership with Blumen Bank of America. Yeah, who cares? Don't like them. Yeah. This is what I mean. I like people tweeting today. A lot of people saying, "Oh, XRP won't reach a bank." I would love to see what those guys are saying to this Brazil partnership. Then, so what? What's happening now? Then, how do you explain this? Like, mm. what's your what's your next like argument against XRP? And it's not like I, said, I say this to you all the time. But it shouldn't be like XRP versus Bitcoin. Like in my eyes, I didn't see it like that anyway. Like you should just be embracing crypto as a market as a whole for whatever utility they serve. You should just be embracing it and supporting each other because we're all fighting for the same goal. Yeah, but it's just blind when it comes hate. to that, I've got a lot of things to say to them. I've got like I've got a lot of arguments to kind of like bring up to them. What I'd love to see what they say to this as well. I honestly, yeah. I would love to see what they what they're saying about it. So would I. and it's just kind of blind hate. Like in, in the CBDC video that I talked about earlier, like I had to stress that like whether you like it or not, this is going to CBDCs, <sighs> but it's kind of along the same point. Whether you like it or not, it like it's happening. So. If you morally think CBDCs are right or wrong, it doesn't really matter because they're going to happen. So my point is, yeah, okay, people invest in Bitcoin to try and be away from the financial system and they don't want CBDCs to happen. So they kind of hedge again on Bitcoin as like a, an, as, as, as a, like this or that. But if that's also accepting the fact that CBDCs are going to happen. So even people who buy Bitcoin accept that CBDCs are coming. So if you know they're coming, why not invest in something that you could you speculate is going to help their implementation that you can then profit from and then use that money to do whatever you want? And that's like that's kind of the point with XRP. People are like, oh yeah, don't use it because it's a banker's coin. Well, if it's a banker's coin, all the banks have all the money and they you they're going to use XRP. Like you're not just shooting yourself in that. You can you can even acknowledge the fact that banks are going to use it and that they are using it. And if you use a statement like that, but you're still not going to invest into it because it's working with the banks and you, you came here to be a, liber a libertarian. Like, if you invest into anything in the space, by, by that, just by putting your money in, you're a speculator, an investor, you're not a libertarian, otherwise you just wouldn't put money into things. So if you're going to put your money in, put it into something where you actually can see and admit that it's going somewhere. Like, Bitcoin, we speculate might go somewhere, and it is a hedge against the, against the like, banks or the the centralized like financial system, whatever you might think about Bitcoin. I like Bitcoin and I will buy some Bitcoin at some point. But if you can understand and see whether you like it or not, that XRP is being utilized, 
that there's no other crypto that's doing anything like this. There is nothing. Not that it's, not that it's doing anything like, yeah, okay, you can say, oh yeah, Bitcoin's more of a liquid, uh, a liquid asset. There's more market cap in Bitcoin. Yes, there is, but what is it being used for? Nothing, it's like gold. Gold's great assets, it's worth $10 trillion, but it isn't being used for anything. XRP is actually being used. This is like the next step in crypto where people are using it to solve like real world problems. And that is like, that is happening. Like it, it's literally right there. And that, oh, that's just, I what know, I mean. it just frustrates me sometimes. I, I know, bro. Like <laughs> people who watch this week round up and if, if, if this week's episode is not giving you enough information to support that, Every week, like how many episodes are on? We're 19 weeks, and I'd say, like, out of those 19, 16 or maybe 15 of those weeks, we've provided new bullish news in regards to Ripple slash XRP. Okay, 